fossil record. In this lesson, we'll explore the science and engineering practices of analyzing and interpreting data, using mathematics and computational thinking, constructing explanations and designing solutions, engaging in argument from evidence, and obtaining, evaluating, and communicating information. Our cross-cutting concepts include patterns, cause and effect, scale, proportion, and quantity, energy and matter, as well as stability and change. Life on Earth. Simplest life forms first appeared on Earth approximately 3.5 billion years ago. All life we see on Earth today has evolved from these early organisms. Fossils help us document the existence, diversity, extinction, and changes of many life forms throughout the history of life on Earth. Fossils. Fossils are preserved remains or traces of animals, plants, and other organisms that lived in the past. Fossils are found in rocks. Many of the rocks that contain fossils are millions of years old. This means that fossils show us the types of organisms that lived on Earth millions of years ago. Fossils example. The fossils in the rock shown are a type of organism called a stromatolite. The rock containing these fossils are estimated at 650 million years old. Stromatolites, similar to the ones preserved here, still live on Earth today. The earliest dinosaur fossils are estimated at around 232 million years old. How much older are the fossils shown in this image? The image shows a stromatolite fossil containing colonies of Graysonia. It originates from Bolivia in a rock formation from the Vendian period. Stromatolites are some of Earth's oldest life forms with fossils aged over 3 billion years. They are common in the fossil record of the Precambrian and still exist on Earth today, although they are much more rare. Stromatolites are mounds made of layered microorganisms, especially cyanobacteria, which are photosynthetic. So how are fossils formed? Most fossils are formed when living things die and are buried by sediments, such as sand and silt. The sediment slowly hardens into sedimentary rock and preserves the shape of the organism. Fossils come in different forms, such as bones and whole animals. Other evidence of creatures, such as their tracks or waste products, called coprolites, can also become fossilized. So how are animal fossils formed? Fossilization is a relatively rare process. Stage one, mud and sand fall to the seabed. As layers build up, heat and pressure convert the sediment to rock. Stage two, dead animals sink to the sea floor the soft parts decompose, leaving only the hard, bony skeleton. Stage 3. The skeleton is slowly buried under layers of sediment. The bone gradually mineralizes and turns into a rock. Stage 4. Over millions of years, more fossils can form. Upper layers of rock contain fossils formed more recently. Stage 5. As the sea retreats or the rock layers are pushed up, the rock becomes exposed to the weather. 
Stage six, erosion by wind, rain, earthquakes, and human activity gradually erode the rock layers exposing the fossils. Fossils are rare. This is because only sedimentary rocks can contain fossils. Other rock types do not contain fossils. The steps needed for a fossil to form are rare. Most organisms decay when they die, or are eaten by other organisms. Fossils are destroyed by the heat and pressure of the geological activity in the rock cycle. This means that most of the fossils formed probably no longer exist. The rarity of fossils means that we currently do not have a complete record of how life on Earth has changed. This is particularly true of Earth's earliest life forms, which were soft-bodied, meaning that fossilization was extremely rare. However, scientists are still discovering new fossils and our understanding of ancient life continues to improve. The fossil shown here is from a Burgess Shale deposit in British Columbia, Canada. The deposit is estimated at 508 million years old, the Middle Cambrian, and one is, is one of the fewest examples of soft body preservation. This fossil is a worm from the Otoa group. It's important to recognize that the fossilization process for a soft-bodied organism would have to be perfect. And so fossils like this are extremely rare. Fossil dating. Paleontologists are scientists who study fossils. They use fossils to understand when different species existed and how they changed over time. The collection of fossils and their placement in chronological order is known as the fossil record. Different methods can be used to tell how old a fossil is. Relative fossil dating is one method and radioactive dating is another. Relative dating. This is used to work out the chronological order in which fossils occurred. Scientists look at where fossils are located in their original rock layers. So in this image, which rock layer is the oldest? And which rock layer is most likely to be the youngest? The oldest layer would be on the bottom, and the youngest layer would be at the top. This is called the law of superposition. Scientists use the law of superposition for relative dating, which is that the oldest rocks are at the bottom and the youngest ones are at the top. Relative means compared to something else. Relative dating tells us whether a fossil is older or younger than another fossil or rock layer. It does not give us an exact age for a fossil in years. Sedimentary layers. Sedimentary rock layers can be folded, misaligned, or eroded by geological processes. This makes it more difficult to determine the relative age of fossils found in these layers. An understanding of geological processes helps scientists to work out the relative age of deformed layers. Index fossils. Index fossils are fossils that are known to only occur within a very specific time range, but found in a wide range of locations. If the fossil that needs dating is found in the same layer as an index fossil, then it must fall into the age range of the index fossil. This can help scientists to estimate the relative age of the fossil and the surrounding sedimentary layers. Using index fossils.
Looking at this image, we can see different layers have different fossils. By knowing the relative ages of different forms of fossils, we can estimate the age of that layer of rock. Using the fossil record. What does this fossil record suggest about species X? Species Y seems to disappear and reappear later. Why might this be? Also, which layer shows the most diversity? Can we know for certain that this was the most diverse time period? The fossil record suggests that species X is either extinct or migrated out of the area after layer 3 was formed. Species Y is not present in layer 4. This may be because it was not present in the area at this time or because there were no fossils formed. Layer 3 shows the most diversity, but this is not necessarily the case in reality as there may have been a wide range of soft-bodied creatures over the time in which these layers were deposited. The conditions for fossilization may also have been more favorable during the period of layer 3, meaning that more organisms were preserved than in other layers. Radioactive dating Scientists can use a technique known as radioactive dating to determine the exact age of rocks and fossils. The amount of radioactivity in rocks decreases over time at a known rate. Scientists can measure the radioactivity of a fossil and use this to determine its age. The smaller the amount of radioactivity, the older the fossil will be. Carbon dating. So how do scientists date archaeological objects? Oftentimes they will use carbon dating. Carbon dating can only be reliable for fossils up to and around 50,000 years old. For other specimens, Potassium-argon dating can be used. This is based on the ratio of potassium-40 to argon-40 in minerals and rocks. So let's look at this closer. Scientists can date archaeological objects using measurements of the amount of the radioactive isotope carbon-14 in the remains. This process is called carbon dating. Plants take in some carbon-14 in the form of CO2, carbon dioxide. When animals eat plants, they take in carbon-14 as well. When an animal or plant dies, it no longer takes in new carbon-14. This means that as the carbon-14 decays, it is not replaced, and so the proportion in the animal or the plant falls. The longer a plant or animal has been dead, the lower the proportion of carbon-14 contained in their remains. Carbon-14 has a half-life of 5,700 years. This means that it takes 5,700 years for half of the carbon-14's uh, atoms in an object to decay.
From the level of carbon-14 in the remains of once living matter, scientists can work out how many half-lives have passed, and they can estimate the age. This can provide evidence for the age of the remains of objects such as bones, cloth, wood, and paper. Using carbon dating. Use the graph to determine the age of each fossil found. 25% carbon-14. 25 Using the graph, we're going to look at the percent of carbon-14 remaining. It says 25%. I find 25% on my graph, and I find where it intercepts the approximate age of this fossil would be around 10,200 years old. Our next fossil only has 12% carbon-14. This fossil would have somewhere around 10,700 years old. Carbon dating can be used for fossils up to around 50,000 years old. So could carbon dating be used for any of the fossils shown here? Many of the fossils in the fossil record are too old for carbon dating. Other types of radioactive dating, such as potassium-argon dating, would be used instead.